and uh, where is my Excel? Okay, here's my Excel. So in Excel, uh, there is this formula or function called RAND, R-A-N-D. Okay? This function generates a random floating point number, high precision number, from 0 to 1 in a way that is uniformly distributed. In other words, all numbers from 0 to 1, no matter how many, how many decimal, decimal places there are, uh, are equally likely to be displayed whenever you call RAND. Okay? So uh, this function has a few properties. It is widely available in all computers. Yes, in your mobile phone as well. All computers, right? Mobile device, tablets, um, PC, notebook, all computing devices begin their life with having a RAND, right? So it is basically some sort of uh, uh, <clears throat> tapping into the electrical noise circuitry to you know, measure certain randomly uh, fluctuating voltage to get that signal so that it is really random enough. Um, so when we call this RAN function, it is random in nature. It generates a number between 0 to 1. It is also very cheap to get, to calculate. When I say cheap, uh, it is in terms of CPU cycles. So it is very efficient. All right, I, uh, to for the for the system to produce a random number like this. All right, so uh, this random number is efficient. Therefore, we can generate a lot. It doesn't take a lot of CPU times. So let's generate a whole bunch of them. Uh, a thousand numbers, let's say. And we are arriving at a thousand numbers. Yep. And I'm going to label the first one rand. All right. So uh, do a quick function nine, and you see that you get a thousand random numbers. All right. Uh, generated really effortlessly by the system. Okay. I'm just slowly pressing F9, but I can just hold there. I can hold my F9 and you can see the numbers are just randomly flooding the screen, right? Without the computer hanging or slowing down even. So very efficient. And what does that mean? That means we can plug a lot of random numbers from the universe, um, you know, as many as you like, as frequently as you like, without hogging the system. That's very important because if it takes a lot of time to generate one random number, you won't have your mobile games, you know, because mobile games have millions of random numbers generated every second. So here we have RAND X. And uh, what's the point of having this? But uh, to the, the, the reason is that we need this for simulation. Okay, so let's understand from the Excel's perspective, how do we calculate uh, normal distribution? So if I have an X here, and I need to have um, an X has the value of 100, all right, and my X basically follows uh, normal distribution with a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 10, then the question is, what is the probability of less, uh, P of X less than or equal to uh, the value? The value x, right? So, uh, and to get that, we can do norm dot. As you can see, Excel shows you dist. We'll be using dist and inf, uh, pretty much. So you can, uh, uh, you need to worry about the rest less. So, to get the CDF, all right, we need to get uh, the dist function. The dist function requires a few numbers that are all quite familiar. We supply D2 X value. The mean is 100. SD is 10 because it's given by the, the question. And to get CDF, we will always type true. All right, because false gives us the PDF. We will not need the PDF in this case. Okay, so we get 0 
we can also rewrite this as CDF of X yeah, because it is giving us CDF. Now, uh, no surprise here because 100 is the midpoint of the distribution. So no surprise, but we can certainly do more. We can do 90, uh, 85, 80, all right, and also 110, 115, 120. And we basically need to just copy and paste all these. Yeah, and we'll get our normal CTF uh, right away. No big deal. Okay. Now the question is this. What is the inverse CTF of uh, P, where P is the CTF of X? Okay. So we uh, conceptually, we understood it as tracing through the CDF curve from the Y to the X, right? So in Excel, we do this by invoking the norm inverse. So instead of calling it inverse norm, they call it norm dot in. But you get the idea, the, the sense of inverseness is still there. So give it the CDF, all right? And then interpret this CDF under the bell curve with a mean of 100, standard deviation of 10. Okay, any part of this that you don't understand? I hope it's straightforward because all the numbers are the bare essentials that are needed, right? For Excel to calculate the number, the X value. So we should get back the column in D. Yeah, no surprise. And no surprise that we should get, get back exactly the same values in D. Because that's what that's where we started off, right? Okay. So we can easily do inverse CDF for normal distribution in in um in uh, Excel, and where is the simulation? Ah, here is the simulation, right? The simulation is this. If you calculate inverse CDF of a constant number, such as this, then you're doing statistics. You're not doing simulation. But the moment you change the fixed CDF value, constant value, to rand okay the moment you change that then you're doing simulation let's try okay so that's our title uh, and what we want to do is norm.inf of rand so c2 okay of 110 so that would generate a bunch of random numbers well here in this case is one number but we'll repeat that across we'll generate a bunch of random numbers and they are not random they're not random random they're random uh, in nature but when you plot a histogram about them you calculate the mean you will get 100 when you calculate the standard deviation you will get 10 okay so let's Let's see. So um, I'm going to basically repeat that a thousand times. Okay, so let me move to the bottom. Okay, we are reaching a thousand here. Paste. Okay, do they look random? Sure, random enough, but how do I know that this is kind of right? Well, just uh, calculate, right? So we have the mean and the standard deviation. So let's calculate the mean. The mean is the average in Excel of G2 to G... Uh, well, I can just uh, take advantage of Excel's uh, auto-skipping of non-values uh, to calculate average. And look, it is 100 point something, close enough, all right? And uh, we can calculate the standard deviation of the generated random numbers and verify that it is close enough to 10. And because I only have a thousand numbers, it is close enough. So there's a little bit of deviation. But if I calculate 10,000 numbers, I'm going to get very, 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 very close to 100 for mean and 10 for standard deviation. That's F9. Repeat a few times. And remember, every time I press F9, or if you are pressing F9 now, you will get 2,000 random numbers. Uh, 1,000 here and 1,000 here, right? So no doubt they're 
connected, but you are getting 2,000 random numbers. So every 1,000 numbers, we get mean and standard deviation, and they're always consistently uh, controlled. They do not meander away from the specified values. Right. So I can change them into a rand, and that would even make it easier. Right. So that would disconnect from column C. I can delete that. So I can just now copy and paste it. And every now every cell now will have the same formula. But because rand function itself is random, so no two cells will be the same. At least not, not uh, likely to be the same. Yeah. Okay, so that's already this so this is simulation. This is it. The moment we change the CDF value, constant value to rand, right? Then we are simulating. Okay, so that's uh, this section, the first way of generating random uh, values, which is using Excel's uh, built-in inverse functions.